If you have your Bibles, let's turn to Leviticus, the 14th chapter, starting at the first verse. When you're there, say, man, would you please, if you're able, stand for the reading of the Word of God? Uh, Something that I've got used to doing because, you know, in the Old Testament, they used to stand for six hours while the man of God, the priest for the house, would read from the law of Moses. So, you know, we're under the new covenant. We've got the Holy Ghost. We can feel the Holy Spirit. So how much more should we be excited about the Word of God to stand and reverence the Word of God? Amen? Uh, I'm just a a simple preacher. I don't come in here. I ain't going to be speaking real eloquent. I say words like tater and tomato, so you're going to have to forgive me for that one. I'm just an old, I was raised free will Baptist and preaching the Pentecostal church now. I actually pastored right down the road for a little while. I don't know if anybody remembers Pastor Paul Nickel before he passed away. I pastored that little white church right down here on the corner. So God's so good. I appreciate your opportunity to have me here. And taking Jackie's word, that's a big one. Come on, somebody. Say amen. Amen. Leviticus, the 14th chapter, in the first verse, and it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought forth unto the priest, and the priest shall go forth out of the camp, and the priest shall look, and behold, if the plague of leprosy is healed in the leper, then the priest shall command to take for him that is to be cleansed two birds, alive and clean, and cedar wood, and scarlet, and hyssop and the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water as for the living bird he shall take it in the cedar wood and the scarlet and the hyssop and shall dip them in the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over running water and he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times and shall pronounce him clean and shall let the living bird bird loose into the open field. Can we pray this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the wonderful opportunity, God, to be in your house together, together with a body of believers, God, that believe your word. But God, we thank you for the songs that were sung in the spirit that we feel in this house this morning. But God, as I come to stand here behind this sacred desk to bring forth the already anointed word of God, Lord, I'm asking God that you would anoint this vessel of clay, that my words would not go forth with enticing words of man's wisdom, but God would go forth with the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And God, I'm asking, Lord, that you would anoint the ears that they would hear and the hearts that they would receive. And God will never cease to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. You can be seated in the house of God. I began to uh, uh, begin to seek the Lord about what to preach this morning. You know, that's one thing that we've got away from. Some preachers get their messages off the internet and some of them can go out on, off an outline out of a book, but I still believe in seeking God for a message for the hour. And I don't know why the Lord led me here, but I was reading in the book of Leviticus, and I'll just be honest with you, that is the most boring book in the Bible to me. Come on, somebody, say amen. All all the lineage and the begats and the rules and the regulations, if I ever wanted to fall asleep, I would go to the book of Leviticus and it was like NyQuil to me. But I found a little bit of information in chapter 14 that just gets down in my spirit and stirs my soul. So you have to forgive me if I get a little happy. And the Bible says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, and he said, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. We know that leprosy was a disease in Bible times that was so detrimental. It was so life changing and it was so dangerous that if you contracted the disease of leprosy that they would take you out of the city and they would cast you away from everybody and everything because it was so dangerous. And coming from a medical standpoint leprosy probably was one of the worst diseases that you could contract at the time. It was a bacterial disease that would get into your flesh and it would corrupt your flesh so much that eventually little bits and pieces of your body would begin to fall off. And it was so infectious. And I began to sit here and I began to read this and the Lord began
began to open my mind and I began to think just how much that we were like the leper spiritually when we came to Jesus. Yes, we may not have had a disease that made our fingers fall off. We may have not had a disease where they would throw us out of the city. But we have this disease that had ravaged the human body since the beginning of time. And it was called sin. Come on, somebody. Is it all right to say sin in the house of God today? So many people don't want to touch that topic because it hurts people's feelings or it offends them. But I still believe that sin is sin. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. I still believe in living right. Come on, somebody. Can you say amen in the house of God? And I began to think about how much that we can liken leprosy and we can liken sin together. Because you don't just one day just wake up and decide you're going to live a life of vicious sin. It begins to creep into you. It begins to knock on your heart when you're weak and you're down and you don't know what you're going to do and you don't know where that you're going to turn. Oh, I feel the preacher in the house of God this morning. You might just get me for an hour if I don't quit feeling this good. Hallelujah. But listen, sin begins to creep in when you think that it won't take over. In the middle of the night and you wake up and you've had a bad week and things begin to turn your mind the enemy begins to use those and that's what leprosy would do it would slowly move in your body and it would slowly begin to ravish you until eventually you were cut off and you would die and whether you want to realize it this morning or not if you live a life of sin it will ravish your body and bring death to you it will cut you off from your family you want to know why most people don't get along with their family that go to church it's because they can't stand to be around the presence of God that kills sin Woo! hallelujah I'm excited you had to forgive me in this house this morning. I was trying to be all nice and proper, but you know what? You can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the boy. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel the spirit to preach in this place. But leprosy would draw him away. And this is where we find ourselves. You know, we turn into the book of Genesis and we find that God had created Adam. And the Bible says that God would walk with Adam in the cool of the evening. That he would have communion with him. That he would walk hand in hand. Adam got to walk hand in hand with God. With the Master. Ain't that just wonderful? Wouldn't you love to walk hand in hand? Hand with God. But Adam, as time progresses, God tells him, You can't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You can't eat of that fruit. But over time, they became more curious. And Eve was beguiled by the serpent. And then the, the man was beguiled by his wife. And they took on the, the fruit that they were supposed to eat. And sin entered into their body. And now Adam could not walk into the same union that he once had with Almighty God. Listen, I don't know about you. But I don't know if I could ever wake up in the morning and do anything without God. And when you live in sin, it separates you from God. Can I just be truthful to you all in the house of God this morning? If you do not have Jesus as your personal Savior, turn your back on the world and serving Him with your heart, mind, body, and soul, you cannot walk in a perfect union with God. Woo! Come on, somebody say amen. amen. And so you see here, we have the leper. And we can liken him unto a sinner man who had absolutely nothing. I don't know about you, but I was only 10 years old when I gave my heart to the Lord. But I was probably the meanest 10-year-old you'd ever met. Jackie, don't shake your head. You didn't know me then. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. I had a cast on my arm. I hated going to church. I didn't like going to church. I had a drug problem when I was a kid. My mom drugged me to every church. Come on, somebody say amen. I had the same problem. I'd have to go and she'd play piano at the church and I'd have to sit there and watch her. And if I was mean, I'd have to sit up there with her. Come on, somebody say amen. I sat up there with her a lot. That's how I learned to play piano. Praise God. 
But I, I was mean. I, 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 I didn't want to go to church. I had no thoughts about God. I, I didn't care about going to church. It was more of a chore than it was anything else. And, uh, and all I cared about was hanging out with my friends and watching TV or going out and playing. Come on, that's what 10 year olds think about. But I'm so glad that even at 10 years old, uh, he found me in a little Baptist church uh, in Dayton, Ohio. We went to go watch somebody, some friends get baptized. Uh, and he found me in a Sunday school room uh, in the middle of Dayton, Ohio. And he pulled on my heart and said, you got to come to me. And this man talked about Jesus. And it drew my heart and it broke my heart. And I had to find out who this man was. Amen. See, that's the problem with the world. Is that this disease called sin has ravished them. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Oh, I'm about to make some people really mad. You want to know why? You see so many people clinging to so many different things. And I'm just a very honest person. We see a homosexuality running rampant in the United States of America today. You want to know why? Because they're letting sin ravish their body. And it's changing their natural way of thinking. Because sin is a disease that will destroy you. Come on somebody. Say amen. You want to know why you see uh, so many people with so many different colored, ha colored of hair. And they got so many piercings in their face. You don't know whether you take them to, uh, to the hospital if they get sick or you take them to Midas. Come on, somebody. Say amen. That's true. Uh, that's true. Come on now. I, I, don't, I don't pick on people for having piercings and, and things like that. I know God's a loving God. Come on, somebody. But you see those people who have it so much, they just look funny. And it's because they're trying to fit in to a life that they never were made to fit into. Because there's a disease that's ran into their mind called sin. And they feel like this is the way that I have to live. Come on somebody, say amen. But listen, uh, chapter 14 of the book of Leviticus paints a beautiful picture of a redemption plan uh, that was set in order for a leper. That we can set in order for a believer today. Come on somebody, say amen. Amen. And this shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest. And the priest shall go forth out of the camp. And the priest shall look. And behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed, then the priest shall command to take for him, that is to be cleansed, two birds alive and clean, and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds uh, be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. Come on, somebody. Say amen. I look at this and I see that God looked out throughout all of heaven and found there wasn't any sacrifice that was worthy to bring man back into the relationship with God that he wanted to have with his man again. So he took his only begotten son. Oh, come on, somebody. That ought to make you want to shout this morning. He took his only begotten son and he wrapped him in flesh. The Bible says that the one bird had to be killed in an earthen vessel. Before Jesus wrapped himself in flesh, he was spirit in heaven and he chose to take on this earthly coat and this earthly vessel that he might become the sacrifice for your life that you may have life and life more abundantly can somebody say amen in the house of God he took and he wrapped himself a common man born unto Mary he was raised like a common man he felt what we felt he hungered like we hunger he felt sadness like we feel sadness he walked 33 and a half years on this earth and he chose to lay down his life when he didn't have to ain't that just the greatest thing this morning to know he did not have to Woo! Hallelujah. I'm so glad that God made a plan all throughout the Bible to set it up that I might be saved. Come on, somebody say amen. And the priest shall command that one bird shall be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. Woo! Hallelujah. As for the living bird, he shall take it and the cedar wood and the scarlet and the hyssop and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over running 
water. Aren't you glad that he took and he took his son and he broke his body and he placed him on an old rugged cross and he bled and he died and they pierced him in the side. But on that third appointed morning, he came up and it broke the bond of sin in our life that we may have the ability to take a dip at the crimson flow of Calvary and come up a brand new person. Woo! Somebody ought to shout in the house of God this morning. Woo! Hallelujah. As for the living bird, he shall take it and he shall dip them in the blood of the bird that was killed. And then he will sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times and shall pronounce him clean and shall let the living bird loose into the open field. Aren't you glad that you're set free this morning? Do I have anybody that's been set free in the house of God this morning? He came to set you free. There was no man. There was no woman. You know, we often say it like this. You can't ride your grandma and your grandpa's coattail into heaven. There's only one man that walks on this earth. His name's not Allah. His name's not Buddha. His name's not Muhammad. Oh, come on, somebody. Say man. His name is Jesus. The name above all names. And when he pronounced me clean, that was it and it's done and over with Amen. Woo! Yeah. I'm so glad that I got that blood this morning can you imagine what it was like for the leper I was going to die but now I'm cleansed but now even though I've been cleansed something's got to take place could you imagine the redemption feeling that he had when he seen them two birds go down into there and one bird come up and then the blood was sprinkled on him. Come on somebody say amen. I don't know how anybody can go on this earth and not want to feel what I feel when I think about Jesus. I don't see how anybody can not want to be saved when I know how it felt when I got saved. Come on somebody say amen. You know, that's one thing I've never been able to understand uh, is preachers or people get up, testify, or preach, uh, and they'll say, I wish God would give me back the feeling that I had when I first got saved. Uh, I don't know about you, but I love Him ten times more today than I did when I first got saved. Woo! Hallelujah. And He's cleansed. Could you imagine that moment where the priest come out to you, cut off from your family, cut off from your friends, have to watch from a distance while everybody else gets to live in the city and you're an outcast. Woo! But all of a sudden now you're cleansed and you hear those words, you're free. Woo! Hallelujah! And he shall let the living bird loose into the open field. I'm so glad I got something and God set me free. That I don't have to live this life of condemnation anymore, feeling bad, feeling sad, busted and disgusted, or like us like to say, tore up from the floor up. Come on, somebody, say amen. <laughs> Whew. Would every one of you that's in the house of God this morning stand as I get ready to take it back to your pastor this morning? The greatest thing we can offer people, Pastor, is the redemption of the Lamb of God. Woo! I feel excited. I bet I scared her plump half to death. I don't think she's ever heard me preach this hard. Come on, somebody. <laughs> say amen. But I'm so glad that Jesus came that I might have life. Come on, somebody. Say amen. I think about it now more than ever, that blood. <laughs> I told Pastor it was, a, it was a rough week for us at home. Uh, we found out my mom, we, we took her to the emergency room on Wednesday. She had a mini stroke. We found out the same day her cancer's back. We find out the same day there's an infection in her body. She has 103 fever. Come home last night, grandma fell on the floor, broke her nose. We found her laying in the floor. Come on, somebody, say amen. I think about my papa who's went on to be with Jesus. And when I start thinking about everything that I've been through, i got to start thinking about the blood. Because there's nothing. 
that wasn't covered by the blood of that living bird in Leviticus. He was covered. That leper was covered. Everything was taken care of. No more leprosy. You're fine. <laughs> and I think about the blood of Jesus. I can have peace of mind because of the blood of Jesus. I can have life because of the blood of Jesus. I can have healing because of the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody say amen. I can have joy because of the blood of Jesus. Woo! That ought to make you feel good in the house of God this morning. But if you don't know Jesus, now is the perfect opportunity. You know, I've been in churches, I've evangelized since I was 15 years old, and I'm getting ready to be 27 this year. And I've been in churches where I went for years, and I thought people were saved, Pastor. And they come up and give their heart to Jesus just one random night. If you're in this house this morning and you don't know Jesus, we invite you to this altar. As they come to sing, and I'm going to turn it back over to the pastor. I appreciate the opportunity, and I thank you so much. Would you please come if you're lost? We don't want you to die and go to hell. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord some praise.